you're in the store. You're walking with your kids, they're holding your hand, or they're sitting in the cart, and you go by the toy section. Oh, and they just make a mad dash, or they just point and grunt and really want to go over to the toy section because there's this toy that they want so bad. They don't want anything else, and they promise that if you buy this toy for them, they'll never ask for anything else again. It's, oh, it's the only thing they could ever want or need. It's the toy that's going to be the ultimate toy of all toys. It's going to satisfy their, their cravings and their longings. And, oh, it's the only thing. Oh, please, Mommy. Please, Daddy. Please. And you know that they've been pre-programmed and preconditioned with the TV commercials and advertisements that are stuck in between their little kid shows, right? that saying, oh, this is the greatest toy. It's the, it's the ultimate toy. You'll never want anything else again. You want this toy so bad. Ask your parents for permission. Go out and get it, you know? And uh, so it becomes this obsession uh, with the kids, and they go to the store with you and, and, and put on a great big show, song and dance. Lo and behold, you buy it for them. And sure, for the first three or four hours, they're playing with it nonstop, having a grand old time. And uh, then... It sits on the floor, sits in the corner, sits in the back of a closet, sits in the bottom of a toy box, and collects dust for years until you drag it out, put it on some fold-out table, slap 50 cents on it at a yard sale. And that's the way it goes. Same thing happens spiritually. <clears throat> we, we, we think we want something from God so bad, so desperately. Oh, Lord, if you grant this, we're going to be happy. If you grant this, we'll never ask for anything else ever again, Lord. Please, Lord, please. And we as parents, um, you know, sometimes we have the, we, you know, we know better. We know what the kids are, are striving for. We know it's just an infatuation because of, you know, the, the manipulation through advertisement. And sometimes we say no, uh, and that no tests the resolve of the child within, you know, a couple weeks later, a month later, when all the TV advertisements had cycled and they're putting new advertisements on there, you see if they still really want this toy, right? And then maybe after a month or so, and you see that, you see that they really want it, you get it instead of giving in at the first. And then you discover, yeah, wow, they really did want this toy. It's one of their favorite things. Um, same thing happens spiritually. When we pray and we ask for something that we think we want so bad, God tests our resolve. He tests our resolve to see if, if this is what we really want, if this is really our heart's desire, our soul's desire. Because he's going to allow opposition to stand in our way. He's going to allow things, advertisements, if you will, to take our focus on what we thought we really wanted to see if that's what we really want. He's going to allow trials and tribulations to come our way to see if we're still asking and praying for the same thing. Because usually when trials and tribulations come, our focus gets off on what we thought we wanted, whether it be to draw closer to God, whether it be refinement, whether it be revival, whatever. And then we start focusing on these little, petty little trials and things. Oh, Lord, help me get over this cold. Oh, Lord, help me to pay off this bill. Oh, Lord, um, you know, uh, don't let the supervisor pick on me at work. Oh, Lord. And all of a sudden, we're not asking for what we originally thought we wanted, whether it be to draw closer to him, whether it be revival, whether it be whatever. Same thing happened with Israel. Uh, if you check out Deuteronomy chapter 8-2, uh, this is regarding their travels in the wilderness. And um, God says, or Moses says, Remember how Yahweh your God led you 40 years in the wilderness? Why did he do this? To humble you. Why else did he do it? To test you and to know your innermost heart whether you would keep the commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hungry. He fed you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand 
that man does not live by bread alone, but by everything that comes from the mouth of Yahweh, out of the mouth of the Lord God. You go to uh, chapter 8, verse 16, it kind of says the same thing. It says, Who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers had not known, to humble you and to test you. So make your future the happier. Beware of saying in your heart, my own strength and might and my own hand has won this power for me. Remember Yahweh your God. It was he who gave you this strength and won you this power. Thus keep the covenant as it is to this day that he swore to your fathers. Children of Israel thought they wanted the promised land. They thought they wanted the promised land so bad. That's all they could ever think of. You know, they're traveling in this wilderness and, uh, you know, dealing with the hardships and the ordeals of being out in the wild. And they want to live in settled homes. They want this, this land flowing with milk and honey that, that, that has more than enough overabundance. So Hashem tests their resolve in the wilderness to see if this is what they really want. And lo and behold, they didn't want it as bad as they thought they did because as soon as the spies came back, and all but two of them said, oh, there's giants in the land. Oh, my goodness, they're bigger and stronger and bigger and badder than we are. And they live in fortified cities. Their weaponry and their and their uh, defenses are way more than what we could. Oh, and then all of a sudden say, oh, uh, uh, OK, well, um, I don't think we wanted the uh, promised land as, as, as bad as we thought we did. And then God said, all right, that's the way you, if you can't believe that I can bring you into the promised land. And, and, and you don't want this as bad as you say you do, then fine. Go out into the wilderness for 40 years until every one of you whiners and belly acres die, and I'm going to bring your children into this land, and they're going to truly want it and appreciate it. This past week, a lot of believers have been talking about trials and tribulations, and I'm not trying to be belittle what the struggles that people go through, okay? But I'm just trying to bring out the point that we've lost our focus. The focus has shifted from this refinement, this revival, this thing that we're pressing in for and praying for, and these God's allowing these trials and tribulations to test our resolve, to test to see if this is what we really want. Do we really want revival as bad as we say we do? Because he's testing our resolve. And if you find that your focus is being shifted, and you're focusing on all the trials and tribulations instead of that end goal of revival and drawing closer to God, then the devil just pulled the wool over your eyes. He got one up on you. It's the classic uh, distraction technique. You know, it's like all these TV shows, you know, where uh, you're, you, there's this this fort or this this headquarters and it's or this prison and it's heavily guarded and you got the good guys who want to come in and and attack it or break somebody out or rescue somebody or whatever what do they do you know they toss a rock and all of a sudden the guard hears this this noise and he goes and walks off to investigate and the guys sneak in boom that's exactly what's happening to your life Satan's throwing the little stones of distraction of sickness of illness of trouble at work trouble at school um, financial issues, and we're being distracted, and we wander off to investigate the, the the recent fire that was set. And we're not knocking, we're not seeking, we're not asking nonstop like like we were. God is permitting these tests to test our resolve to see if this is what we really want. And I tell you, man, I want it. Um, I'll admit. I got distracted just a little bit this week. Some old, um, some old ways of thinking, some old habits was attempting to creep up and take over my mind. And I recognized it. I realized it. I prayed against it. And uh, I said, no, <laughs> I'm not going to be mowed down. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to be drugged down. And see, another thing that he uses is your feelings. Oh, you don't, you don't feel like you used to. Oh, you don't you, you don't have that passion like you used to. Guess what? We walk by faith and not by sight. My feelings are irrelevant. It's just nice when the feelings coincide with the faith. Right? Jeremiah tells us 
in, in, in his prophetic book, the heart is the most deceitful thing. Who could know it? You know, we can't even trust ourselves. We can't trust our heart. I want revival bad enough, whether I feel it or not. I want it. And that's what I'm pressing in towards, whether the feelings are there or not. That's irrelevant. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep seeking. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep pressing on. No matter how much the oppression gets and, and, and the attacks of the enemy and the tribulations and trials that come my way, I'm going to keep marching through. I'm going to keep persevering. I'm going to keep pressing on and pressing through because I want that revival. Because I know that I need it. I know that the village of Plasterock needs it desperately. And I'm not going to stop until we get it. So I'm just encouraging you, brothers and sisters, don't get down, don't get defeated, don't get discouraged. Don't lose your focus because God is testing your resolve to see if this is what you really want bad enough. Don't be like that little kid in the toy store who thinks he wants something bad enough and gets it, plays with it for a little bit, and then boom, it's, it's yesterday's garbage. No, if that's what you really want in your heart, in your mind, and you keep pressing on even when the sensational feelings of revival and and spiritual titillation flee and leave and you're just left with cold numbness feelings have nothing to do with it folks it's faith we walk by faith not by feelings we walk by faith not by sight so keep pressing on people of god love you guys shalom